What's up, guys, and happy holidays uh, from uh, me, Eli, at Night Jiu-Jitsu. And uh, Alan and I were here, and uh, I was thinking about like what would be a good like holiday-themed uh, jiu-jitsu technique video. And the first thing that came to mind was gift wrap. I mean, for pretty obvious reasons, um, but to make it extra holiday-ish, we thought we'd dress up ridiculously. So um, we're gonna t go over some uh, gift wrap options. And I want to take it from like a pretty broad expense because we talked about a whole lot of things and usually whenever you see somebody talking about the gift wrap, it's mount, they get the gift wrap controlled and maybe go into an arm bar, maybe a back take, not a lot, but uh, we've got a lot of options today. So we're going to start out and uh, feel free to fast forward to the more advanced stuff at the end if you want to, but we're going to go from fairly basic to pretty advanced. So um, let's start with the mount position. So when we get here, <clears throat> uh, one of the most basic ways to set up the gift wrap is to try to get his elbow across the center line, right? So however that's happening, if he's reaching at any hour, he's extending his arms, that makes it extra easy. I'm gonna twist and turn, I'm gonna shove his elbow across the center line. Once it gets there, I wanna drop my weight down on top of his tricep to keep that uh, kind of twisted arm uh, position like that. From here, I wanna reach underneath the head. I can use this arm to help pass it to here. I wanna get a thumb grip so that I have full control around his wrist. And then from here, I wanna get him up on his side usually. So from this position, I wanna keep this one uh, pulled in so he doesn't rigor it out and uh, base out. I wanna keep my leg down here close. I wanna use my chest to drive forward, but then also scrape him back. So now he's in this kind of gift wrap position. So this is where we're trying to achieve the whole time. So from here, of course, if this is a fight, I've got great shots from here that I can hit and he's uh, got very limited ability to defend. So this is a good thing. So one of the uh, first initial options that you usually see from here is the arm bar. So uh, in the arm bar position here, I wanna work this foot up to get higher up into his armpit like this. I wanna walk the, my heel to his armpit. I wanna reach through this gap hole here in the middle and I wanna circle it around, try not to knock his hat off, get out in the front, lean all my weight to this side, step this foot around here like this and then use this to unfold the arm, take it back. And now I've got this straight arm bar option from there. Again, um, it's an option. I don't think it's one of the better ones. One of the better ones, I think, is to get from here like this. And a lot of times he knows that arm bar is coming, so he'll use this hand to kind of defend that arm. If that's happening, the really cool thing that can happen from here is when I reach through that hole, I can get a hold of that bottom arm. Now I've got both his arms pinned together like this. And then I'm gonna use this here, tuck his uh, arms into his diaphragm, and then I'm gonna use my chest to roll him over on top of both of those arms. This is a miserable position here. He's stuck on both those arms. And now this hand is still free here to reach underneath for the choke. To get a one arm choke, I'm not gonna squeeze like a rear naked choke. I'm gonna hold his trap and I'm gonna pull my elbow on the other side back toward me like this through his throat. So it's a really miserable position. He has a hard time even tapping from it. So that's another really good option from there. Once I have this gift wrap position like this here, another option that we might have from here is if I can keep this arm away so he's not defending, he's not giving me any grief with this one, sometimes I can either step on the arm with this hand here like this while I'm starting to set up these other things, or I can keep this one stretched out and then kick this one all the way through to here. Once I kick through, now I'm gonna finish this mounted triangle while still mounted rather than rolling off and finishing from the guard. So then from there, I'm gonna hold my shin, I'm gonna keep it there, drive my knee to the floor, keep his head pulled up, circle in like this, and then I want both my knees turning this direction over here to finish for that mounted triangle like that from the FYL. So um, if you're into uh, a little bit quicker finishes and the opportunity pre presents itself and you don't care about the safety of your training partner, then uh, wrist locks exist. So whenever we get to this position here, um, if I can reach down and grab the blade of his hand like this, so I'm weaving through, grabbing the blade of his hand up by the pinky, I wanna hold like that. And then from here, I'm gonna grab this other hand that was holding his wrist. I'm gonna reach higher up on his forearm. I'm gonna pull his elbow this way toward his fingers. And I wanna pull this one back like I'm revving a motorcycle here like that. And then that is a really nasty wrist lock this direction. Now, there's another wrist lock the other direction. If I can get the hand folded down this direction here, and I'm gonna hold the wrist in like that. And then from there, uh, I like to just grab and reinforce that forearm and then keep that planted on the floor and then drive my chest down on top of his uh, tricep and elbow. It's really nasty. I'm using the floor as leverage and my chest as leverage. So it's a lot of pressure for that, for that wrist lock like that. This next one is a choke that I see a lot of people um, demonstrate. You don't see it hit live a whole lot. And I think there's one big fundamental reason that you don't see it hit live a lot because there's too much space. It's painful, but it's not a really clean choke. We're gonna look at a variation of this that Alan and I like to do that uh, makes it a little bit cleaner of a blood uh, strangulation here. So whenever we get to this position, the, the idea is the cobra clutch. And the way you'll see it demonstrated a lot of the time is a standard pro wrestling kind of move here where they're like, ah, here, this way. It's painful on the neck, but it's not gonna get a clean choke. 
So if though I managed to get this hand inside here like this, the problem is the gap of space in front of his neck and on this bottom side here. So if I get this hand here instead, and then I can reach through, I'm gonna drop my chest back farther and I wanna reach up and grab the tricep instead. So now there, that's a lot tighter, a lot cleaner right there on the carotid. So it's a nasty choke. So again, from here, I've got this kind of gift wrap. I'm gonna reach this one up on top of his neck here like this, but instead of just trying to make the pressure here, I wanna slide up past the snowman, get to the tricep, squeeze, <laughs> nasty choke there. So that's a modified uh, Cobra clutch that actually works. So this is gonna be um, a modification on the dar stroke. So if I, if I reach through here, some ways that we'll try to roll him over sometimes is to get this hand and then tuck in and drive him to his stomach like this, but sometimes this acts as a little bit of a kickstand and I have, a trouble, I have trouble getting it out of the way. So um, what we can do from here though is if I can get that to the floor, that forearm on the floor like that, then I'm gonna put my head behind his head so he can't extend out and uh, relieve the pressure. And then I'm gonna base on my head, step back over like this. So we get up, I wanna pass this in front of him here this way. Now, once here, I'm gonna take this hand off the floor and I wanna shoot through underneath this direction. So I'm keeping his arm in position. I wanna shoot this one through, catch the back of his head. Now I can take this one out and then I can start shooting in and looking for my dark show off of it like that. So one more time on this one, I got inside here like this. I'm gonna leave this hand in. I'm gonna let go of the wrist. I'm gonna plant my head on the floor behind him. I'm gonna base up and get myself in front of him here. Shoot this hand through to catch the back of his neck. Dive this one by, behind him here and then I'm gonna finish my darsh choke like that from the skin. So on this one, we're gonna do an arm and guillotine. And the arm and guillotine, the way it's gonna happen is because I have his arm bunched up like this, I have his shoulder in place to make a nice little tight con constriction already. Then whenever we get here, I want to stay on top this time. I'm gonna keep the wrist here this way. And then I'm gonna post and I'm gonna step off to kind of a modified knee on belly. I don't have to have the biggest stabilizing uh, knee on belly in the world right now because what I wanna do from here is while I still have his head and his arm, this hand is gonna dive behind and I'm gonna grab the outside of his tricep. So we're gonna get all the way to here. So it's already very tight. I could probably start to finish this from right here because I want to encourage him to roll up at me. So if he tries to roll into me this way, which is the only direction he can go, nasty, nasty tight constriction with that hand and arm guillotine like that. One more time on this one <clears throat> is here. Once I have this uh, pulled in nice and tight, I wanna step off right here this way. Let's just modify knee on belly. I wanna dive through, catch his tricep like this. I wanna sit, he's gonna roll up into me because it's the only way he can go. So I wanna get this nice bite, squeeze tight, everything in like this. So again, like I mentioned before, typically whenever you see people setting up the gift wrap, um, it always happens from the top position, from mount, from uh, technical mount, but there's a lot of good opportunity from it from the guard off of an arm drag. So what I wanna do is whenever he's postured up like this, I wanna grab same side wrist here. I wanna get a nice low grip around his butt. I don't wanna be high like this. High guards are for when he's broken posture. He's got good posture now, so I wanna get a low grip around his hips. I wanna grab same side, I wanna reach through and across here this way. I wanna pull that elbow toward me and then I wanna lift with my legs and drag him forward this direction. Like I'm gonna climb his back and I do wanna to attempt to climb his back, so I'm gonna come up on my elbow this way. Gift wrap happens from here um, whenever he doesn't allow, he doesn't concede the back take because he's driving into me. If he's driving into me, then I wanna push this elbow across and now I get that good grip here and now I've got my gift wrap like this. If he keeps driving into me, I'm gonna scoop up on this leg because this is where his driving force is and now I've got a really good kind of flower sweep kind of setup like this. So different things that can happen off of this right here. Um, one of the big ones is, of course, I can sweep him over and then land back in that technical mount where we've looked at all those mount options up to this point. But something else that can happen from here too is that if I can start reaching up and climbing up here on his arm because this arm is free floating a lot of the time, then what can happen is I can step, push that arm away, and then weave through like this. The cool thing that happens off of this one here is that I don't even have to complete the sweep at this point. What I'm gonna look to do is I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna step back and around, and I wanna pull to get that arm back here like this. So I stepped and went around the back to get to this arm bar here. So one more time on that one, because it's kind of weird. <clears throat> From here, I'm grabbing the same side, getting a low grip around his hips. I want to reach through this way, get this do -si do kind of grip, pull him forward, drag the arm across. Look for the back take, he starts driving into me. So I want to push this across to get this nice gift wrap set up. I want to start to look for the sweep here like this. If it happens that I can start to climb up, and I can catch that arm, I'm gonna push it away, weave my leg through, spin around to catch the back, and then extend out to catch that arm bar. So 
Again, we're gonna use that same kind of setup we did before where I use the arm drag, so I grab same side wrist, low bite around the hips. I wanna get the do -si do grip. Reach forward and drag here like this. I start to reach across, get this gift wrap position here like this. I'm gonna to start to look to set up the sweep. What's gonna happen on the sweep this time is as we're going here and across this way, as he starts to land, again, look where my, my leg is starting to fall here. So at that point, I wanna reach this one around and through, and now I catch, I switch the legs out, and I have this nice rear triangle set up this direction. To finish this one, different things that we can look to do. Sometimes that little bent shoulder lock is there, or the straight arm, but if I really wanna get the triangle finish, I wanna sit up this direction, and I wanna scrape my butt back this way. That's gonna put a lot of pressure on the neck, but it's also gonna tighten the choke. So we've looked at mounted options. We've looked at the guard, uh, getting into that flower sweep kind of option, maybe going to the top or finishing from there. Now we're gonna look at side control. From side control, I'm in this kind of tight and attack mode side control where he's got his arm framing in on me. I've brought both my arms across to this other side. So to, to deal with this frame, if it's giving me a lot of grief in my neck, I wanna reach through this direction. So as I reach through, now I'm gonna swim this back and I wanna catch underneath his head like this. So at this point, now I've cleared a path to be able to cut across. And I want to think about keeping this hand at the ready to be able to dive through because that's where I'm going to catch his wrist for that gift wrap. So from here, I want to go here like this, slide through, and look how high I bring my knee. And then now I reach, and I'm going to grab here on that wrist control. One of the easiest options from here, I feel like, um, is to go back, but to take the back off this direction here. I can already start my climb like this. We've got our rear triangle set up. We've got our arm bar. We've got all of our different options to be able to go into all of our back attacks from here. One of the easier ones to, to look at from this direction is to be able to go in and get this nice little short choke. He's really low down on me like that. Um, or to be able to go here, frame, get across, back to the arm bar on this side, right? So on the previous one, we looked at going from here, weaving through that top arm, swimming back and getting to this direction here. Now, sometimes he hides this arm because he doesn't like it to be between my two arms like this because he feels like I can attack it easier. So he hides it down here, so that doesn't give me good access to be able to attack. I can maybe start to look for setting up Kimuras, but another option that I have is if he's being very stubborn in my hip over on this side, is that as I start to swim back in this direction and I start to move more north-south here, I want to stay heavy so that it kind of scrapes his arm up with me. So as we're moving, moving, moving around like this here, I want to take this one across. This one is going to sweep back here, and I'm in this kind of modifi this modified kind of gift wrap here just with one arm. Um, I've heard this called the sugar a lot of the time because if I want to sit here and kiss him on his cheek, he can't really do anything about it. But um, we got this really tight side control. Now, I could slide all the way across, get a traditional gift wrap, but I want to show a submission that uh, I think is really evil and really nasty and really fun from here that a, a buddy of mine, Brian Ashland, showed me. Um, Brian the Butcher, look him up on Instagram. But he gets here like this, really nasty, and then he weaves through to get the legs like this. And then from here, I'm just gonna kind of flex and bring my hands together. And he's already tapping because it's a nasty spinal lock. Uh, Brian called it the redneck twister. I'm probably showing a little modification on it right there, but it's a really nasty lock if you can get the guy all twisted up like that. So again, uh, redneck twister. All right, guys, so uh, I hope that you like the gift wrap series that we showed. It's pretty extensive gift wrap. This is basically like a whole instructional. I don't know how long this video is gonna be. But anyway, um, there's some really good options. It's a really powerful position uh, for a lot of different contexts. And hopefully you found some good submissions that you can start to implement into your game already. If you have some others, let me know in the comment section. Let me know what you think about the video. And I appreciate you guys watching. Happy holidays to you all.